Hello friends, I wanted to share with you how you can create your own custom watercolor palette to travel on your sketchbook adventures with you. Customize to the colors that you tend to mix on the go. We're gonna be repurposing all sorts of fun things, so I hope you enjoy. So I'm repurposing some Legos to use as watercolor pans. These are off-brand Legos, so I'm just getting in here and I'm popping out the centers so that I could have a nice clean pan for putting my watercolor mix inside of. These are pretty deep and can hold quite a bit of color. You can see here by the depth here. And I'm just gonna repeat this process with this batch of pieces. So as you can see here, it holds quite a bit of paint. And once complete, they'll all just click into place. The recipe that I'm gonna be using for these colors come from the book The Green Guide for Artists, which I wrote 100 years ago. <laughs> Not really, but it feels like it. And here is the binder recipe. I'm mixing my powdered gum Arabic to my hot water. Go a little bit slow if you're using the powder so that you don't create too much dust. Just like so. And then mix it up. I'm getting a little messy, but that's okay. And just really try to integrate that powder into the hot water mix. The more it sits, the clearer it'll get. Uh, I get a little antsy here and want to go for it right away. So you can see my gum Arabic mix has quite a bit of air bubbles in it still. But if you let it sit around, those bubbles will dissolve. Next, you want to add a plasticizer like honey or glycerin and clove oil or any other essential oil that has antibacterial properties to your mix. I'm not quite sure what happened to my video that had the glycerin addition, but you could just follow that recipe. And once again, mix, mix, mix. Next, you're gonna be using your binder to add to your pigment. Now, I have a whole bunch of pastels, chalk pastels, that I don't really use so much because I find them to be just too messy on the go and even around the studio. So I'm gonna be repurposing the paint sticks with my custom color combinations to create my watercolors. I'm using a mortar and pestle to grind them down. And just really getting in there, try to get all that powder ground down. Once you have it ground down and mixed together, just check how the color is looking, keeping in mind that it will be a little bit darker when you add your paint binder. Grinding it down as much as possible. Once you have everything ground down, just create a little workspace for yourself. I'm working on top of some tempered glass, and I am just going to empty out that little mortar here, making sure all that goodness is out. And I think I got it all. Double check and scoopy-doop. Okay. So now I'm just gonna grab 
my Muller. If you don't have one of these, it's not the worst. Um, but if you do have one, this just really helps make sure that everything is ground down and well mixed. I'm just gonna take off that extra pigment and break that up a little bit more, making sure it's not too cakey. Bringing it all together into the center. And next, we'll grab the binder. You can see, you can see it's still a little cloudy. I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit more. Again, as I mentioned, if you let it set overnight, it will get clear. All those air pockets will dissipate. And looky here, what do you know? This is the part where I add the glycerin. Adding a smidge as per the recipe. As you can see, I'm not technically measuring anything out. I'm just eyeballing it. And it's gonna require some mixing once again, making sure that the glycerin mixes with the gum Arabic mixture. So now I'm just going to begin adding the mix to the center of the pigment. And essentially you can mix this to your liking as liquidy or as thick as you like. And you can kind of determine that as you go. As you're mixing, you'll find the consistency that you like, that you prefer. Mixing it first by hand. Ultimately, you can mix it completely by hand, but generally what I do is I'll introduce the color to the binder and then come in with the muller and really get in there and make sure it's completely mixed together. Mixing it nice and smooth. And then what you're gonna do is take your palette knife, take off the mix from the bottom. You wanna save all of that for sure. And add it to your mix. And then just try to gather it all together into a nice blob, for lack of a better word. And gather it all together. This is your paint. And as you're pulling it all to the center, make sure you're taking all that little bits of goodness out of the outer edges and mix it a little bit more if need be. And then go ahead and grab your Lego pan. We're gonna fill it up. I'm just making sure everything's nice and blended. Try not to leave anything wasted here. And then just scoop it on in. And you're gonna just fill it up. There will be some slight shrinkage as it dries. So don't be afraid to overfill it a little bit. And that is the process. You are going to make as many colors as you like, or as many color pans as you have, or as many Legos will fit on your base, according to what your color palette preferences are. Isn't that fun? Just cleaning up these edges a little here. And voila my color.
Okay, so here's my color palette. Here's the first one that I made with you all. Got a little messy on the sides, that's okay. And got some blues. A little crackleage happening. Didn't have enough gum arabic. This one came out spectacular. And I'm gonna add them to this base. Feeling a little clever here because I'm thinking that I wanted to create something that could protect the watercolors while they're in my little travel bag when I'm out on the go with my sketchbook. So I'm just building up these side pieces to go along the palette. And that's gonna create a little barrier. They come up a little bit higher than the pans so that I can, oh, I left a little spot here for my thumb as a holder as well. And I got an extra one of these bases that I'm gonna use as a cover. So I'll keep that nice and tight, and then it'll be able to open upon arrival to my destination. I thought this would be a good time to just kind of get into what inspired me to create this watercolor palette. And that is, um, I have been going out on outdoor sketchbooking sessions on quite a regular basis. And there's always these colors that I'm constantly reaching for or constantly trying to mix while I'm on location. And that eats up a lot of time. Um, I'm tending to go to very similar type environments. Right now, I'm deep into exploring all of the wetlands that surround where I live. And so I've created this specific color palette here based on the colors I'm constantly mixing while I'm out on location. So I'm hoping that by having these colors ready to go, that it's gonna make my time outside more efficient so that I could just, you know, look at my color palette and be ready to capture what I'm observing. So the idea of repurposing is very near and dear to me. I try really hard to not acquire art supplies that have a lot of excessive plastics or are exclusively single use. So being able to reach into the toy bin, <laughs> um, We've got so many Legos. I've got two boys and they were both really into Legos and we've got Legos that were handed down to us from other family members and they're great, they're wonderful. I've had a hard time letting go of them because I've always thought, well, oh, maybe they'll come back to them. As it turns out, I'm coming back to them and <laughs> finding new ways to utilize them. Um, Again, these are these specific ones that I used for this project are off-brand Legos, and I did use these because the wells, I'm calling them wells, but they're the Legos themselves. The, the, what I'm referring to as wells is the depth of the Lego. Um, these were a bit deeper than the others, so I thought they would make for a better watercolor palette. Um, so again, yeah, they're off-brand, but whatever you have, look around, and you could very well find a fun way to create some new art supplies with what you already have. 
Some of these did die, um, did dry a bit crackly. And that's because as I was kind of coming to the end of making the paints, I was running low on the gum arabic. So I was being a little stingy with it. Um, so some of those other colors that you noticed when we were close up that were a little crackly had less gum arabic. I could correct that if it was a problem um, by just kind of pulling them out of the palette breaking them down again, adding a little more gum arabic mix. But what I'm finding here as I'm doing my swatching is that it's really not an issue. I'm adding the moisture into it and they're flowing quite nicely. I'm really happy with the way these colors turned out. And again, these were color pastels that were just sitting on the shelf, wasn't really using them. And now, they're going to be a regular part of my rotation. all of these colors can be mixed together as well. I did distract myself and I repeated the same color twice, but that's okay. I made 19 circles instead of 18. And these little outside edges I'm gonna use for mixing more colors or maybe even for adding more white. Oh, and don't forget, these are your colors. You get to give them whatever names you want. I've kind of named all of mine according to what the inspiration for them were. Have fun, and I hope you enjoy making your own color palettes.